I have a knack or an uncanny ability for taking complex topics and simplifying them into easily understandable bits of information is what I've been told on numerous occasions over the years I've been on YouTube. And with this, I guess, newfound skill set that I never even knew I possessed, I wanted to put it to the test and attempt to simplify one of the most confusing and intimidating photo editing programs available today. And what's interesting about this program is that most people agree it is by far the most powerful option available, but many don't use it as it can be rather intimidating and flat out confusing to just get started with. Now, obviously you're not going to become a Photoshop Jedi by the conclusion of this video, but if you've been on the fence as to, I guess, whether or not to, to take your, your photography to the next level with Photoshop, this is the video for you. And my goal is that after I share with you this golden nugget of information that most beginners don't even know exists, that you'll be more comfortable, confident, and inspired to take the first step and at least try it out on a couple of your own photographs. So to jump right into it, this is an image that uh, I completed and, and shared on, on across social media last uh, last week. This is an image from my recent trip to Indonesia. So what I'm going to do, I'm in the, the, the in the develop module. I'm just gonna come over here to photo, and obviously I, I'm in I'm in Lightroom right now. I didn't, I didn't state that, but I'm gonna come over here to photo, edit in edit in Photoshop 2023, and I'm gonna leave this checked, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And while that opens up, normally it takes a couple of seconds, I'm gonna show you just a couple real quick, uh, just quick things about the layout of Photoshop real quick, just to make sure we're all on the same page, and then I'll share with you this, this piece of information that I think is going to make you feel much more comfortable and much more confident to begin testing Photoshop out on your own. So here is the photograph in Photoshop right now, and if my Photoshop looks a little bit different than yours, just come up here to window, select workspace, and I always have mine set to photography right here. So over here on the left side of your screen, these are all just individual tools that you can select from. And up here, these are the kind of the specific tool adjustments. So if I click here on the crop tool, you can see I have all these different cropping kind of like sub tools to the tool or sub menus to the tool. I can come over here to the paintbrush and now all of this changed for information regarding the paintbrush, the size, the, the hardness, of the of the of the paintbrush itself and so on and so forth and then down here is the actual layers paint panel all right through here and from my experience in the the one-to-one -one sessions i do with clients the layers i guess aspect of photoshop is what is so confusing to many so this is the kind of the what i feel is the best way to, to break this down so this right here this is the photograph that we just put inside of Photoshop. This is the background, this is the photograph. So this right here represents this right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to this little dot right here, just select that, and I'm gonna come over here to brightness contrast. And you'll see that it added a brightness contrast layer on top of this layer. So what I can do is I can, and I can come up here to the top, you know, this is the layer and this is how I control this layer. So if I think that this image is a little bit too bright, which based off the histogram, it looks like it might be, I can reduce it just a little bit. And maybe I want to decrease the contrast a little bit as well. Make those kind of adjustments right there. It's got a little eyeball on this layer that I can toggle on and toggle off. And you can see that adjustment right there. So now we have two layers, this layer right here, which is our photograph, which is the background layer. And then we have this brightness contrast layer sitting on top of this layer. So in essence, this is the photograph. And then here is that brightness contrast layer. And it's kind of hard to show, I guess, but this layer brightness contrast is sitting on top of the photo of the background layer. So now we have two layers sitting on top of one another. And that's very, very important. Now, if we want to come down here and maybe add another layer, let's come over here to, uh, let's see, what do we want to add? Hue saturation, there it is. And let's just say that we want to maybe increase the saturation just so it's easier to see at home. Add that up, push that up a little bit. We can come over here to maybe the, uh, the yellows and maybe we want to brighten up the, the leaves right there. As you can see that rocking that back and forth, let's just make it much, uh, bring up the luminance value though so it's easy to see at home. And let's toggle this on and off. So before and after, that's pretty subtle. Let me come over here to uh, the blues. I just want you to be able to easily see this at home. So let's really, really crank up the blues. So now we have before and after, before and after. And now we have three layers. So we have our, our background layer, which is our photograph. 
we have our brightness contrast layer on top of the photograph. And now we have a third layer, which is our hue saturation. So all three of these layers are stacked on top of one another. And as we can, we can turn all of these on and off just like this. And what's cool is if we think that that hue saturation is a little too strong, we can just change the opacity of that particular layer. You can see as I kind of change this back and forth right there. And that's really, really nice to be able to have that kind of control. So what I'm going to do now is I have these three layers right here, all three of these layers stacked on top of one another. I want to combine them all together. So a quick shortcut key. This sounds a little bit confusing, but just bear with me that the, the, the big piece of information is coming up here shortly. But if I hit shift option, command E, basically all that did is it took the hue saturation, the brightness contrast and the photo layer and just basically mushed it all into one. It combined everything into this right here, the merged layer. And you can see it right here. This is basically the combination of all three of these layers. And I can actually come into here, right click, and I can delete these. Delete these layers. Yes. And now we just have this merged layer, which has that brightness contrast adjustment and also has that hue saturation adjustment too. So we only have one layer at this time. Now this is the piece of information that I think is going to make anyone who is an avid Lightroom user who is uncomfortable using Photoshop, pay attention here because I think this is what's going to make you possibly take that leap into Photoshop to begin testing it out. So what I want to do here is I'm going to make something that is called a smart filter. So I'm going to convert that layer to a smart filter and I'm going to hit OK. And it put this little icon right here, which basically indicates that it is a smart filter. And a smart filter is basically just a big grouping of adjustments that you can go back later and make adjustments to. Now, here is the piece of information that I think is going to help out the majority of Lightroom users. And from my one to one sessions with many beginner photographers that use Lightroom, they don't even know that this actually exists. So if I want to, let's say, add clarity or add some texture to this photograph, those tools aren't available in Photoshop. They're available in Lightroom, though. So what do you do here? So I can come up here to filter and I'm going to click on something called camera raw filter and watch this. Does this look familiar? This whole entire interface right through here? This is basically Lightroom. There is very, very, very little difference between Lightroom and Camera Raw inside of Photoshop. So I can come over here to the basic section. And if I want to add a bunch of clarity to this photograph, I can do that. I don't want to do that though. I'm going to reduce the clarity some. Maybe I want to add some texture here. Maybe I want to increase the uh, dehaze a little bit. Uh, maybe, maybe I will add some clarity. I just want you to be able to easily see it at home. And then maybe I want to go down to say the calibration section because the calibration section is something that is synonymous with Lightroom. There is not a real calibration section inside of Photoshop. That's a Lightroom thing or a camera raw thing. So I can come over here and let's say we want to bring up the blue primary. We can really bring that up a lot. I like what it's doing to the trees and the green. Whoops. But I really don't like what it's doing to the sky. It's a little bit too much. So maybe I want to come over here to the color grading, I'm sorry, to the color mixer section. Go to saturation. Let's bring the blues down just a little bit. Something to right there. And then come back to the calibration section. Maybe bring up the, the green primary. Maybe you want to shift these greens more towards yellow a little bit. Something more like that. But you get what I'm saying here. And what you do here is now once you have all your Lightroom adjustments or your camera raw adjustments completed, we're just going to hit OK. And that's going to add those adjustments back into Photoshop. And as you can see, it, it is right here. Smart filter that we created, camera raw filter, toggle that on and off. This is before Lightroom and after Lightroom, before Lightroom and after Lightroom. So now we had our merge layer and now we also have our camera raw filter right here on top of the merge layer. So now we only have these two layers right here. So now if I want to come over here to, you know, our adjustment section again, and let's say I want to add maybe a curve to it. Maybe I want to kind of soften the, the black point just a little bit. I can drag this side up some, whoops, drag it back over to maybe right there. Maybe you want to bring down the darker midtones a touch, maybe bring up the, the brighter midtones a little bit, toggle this on and off before and after, before and after that definitely soften things up quite a bit. Maybe I don't want to do it that much. 
And then I have a curves adjustment on top of that merge visible layer. So all these layers are like pieces of paper, just kind of stack, stacking, stacking on top of each other, one after another, after another. Now, if I say, you know, I want to make a change to the calibration section, or maybe I want to, to do something with the clarity or texture inside of Lightroom. I can simply come back to our, our Lightroom layer, if you will, and come back up here to filter, come down to camera raw filter, and I'm back in Lightroom again. So you always have access to Lightroom. You know, what I, what I encourage others to do is if you're not comfortable using Photoshop, you know, you can import your photos inside of Lightroom and you can do your catalog, cataloging however you like it. And then take that photograph and bring it over into Photoshop exactly like we did. And right out of the get go, if you want to, you can go ahead and start using camera raw filters. So you can start using Lightroom inside of Photoshop. And if that's all you do, if you don't use Photoshop for anything else, except the camera raw filter or except for Lightroom, that's fine. You're still using Photoshop. And that is a fantastic way to just kind of dip your toe in the proverbial water, if you will, to start testing it out. So I can come back over here to the basic section and maybe we want to bring back or reduce some of that clarity just a little bit or reduce some of that texture just a little bit. And if I don't want to make the adjustment like that, if I want to go back to the original kind of, uh, well, I guess Lightroom adjustment that we made, all I have to do, let me come over here and hit cancel, hit uh, cancel all changes, yes. I can just come up here and select camera raw filter and I can double click on that. And that will take me right back here where you can see texture, clarity, dehaze, calibration, all of my settings are still right here. So I can go ahead and make any of my adjustments here. I can come back up here to say detail, I'm sorry, up to basic, and maybe I want to crank up the clarity a lot. There's something about right there. I can easily do that. Maybe I can warm it up just a little bit. I can make those changes and hit OK. I can review my photograph. I can turn my Lightroom adjustment on and off here just to see if I like that. If I'm not comfortable with the way that looks, double click camera raw again, bring that clarity down just a touch, hit OK. But as you can see, I'm using light, I'm not sorry, I'm using Photoshop. Everything is inside of Photoshop, but I have the comfort and I have the, I guess the, the warm and fuzzy feeling of being able to easily access Camera Raw, which is Lightroom and make all of those adjustments. So once you have everything the way you like it and you're really happy with the, the way your image is turning out, I can just come up here to, to file and I can hit save, give this a couple minutes and it will take this file and it will save it inside of Lightroom in your catalog as a TIFF file. And when I come back here, I now have two files. And if I double click on this one, you can see that this is the TIFF file. And if I compare these two images together, the before and after, the before the Photoshop and the after Photoshop, this is where the photograph started. And this is where it's at right now after the Photoshop adjustments. So in my personal opinion, I think that is by far probably the best way for a beginner, specifically a Lightroom user, someone who is very comfortable with Lightroom, someone who is a Lightroom expert, someone who's been using Lightroom for years. This is a great transition, a great way to start using Photoshop is by doing this method right here and just having the, the comfort of knowing that there is Lightroom built right inside of Photoshop. You don't have to only use Lightroom. And the beauty of using Camera Raw Filter, which is Lightroom, is that you're inside of Photoshop. So you have access to all of the amazing wizardry that Photoshop comes with and you have access to Lightroom all at the same time. So I personally think that that is a win-win and I really hope that the, the kind of the, the paper analogy with the layers definitely kind of um, made it seem a little bit more simplified of exactly what layers are because they are, it, in my opinion, it is definitely the, the best way to edit a photograph is by using layers. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And uh, if you enjoyed it, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you enjoyed this week's video and would like to see more Photoshop content uh, on, I hate that word content, I shouldn't. <laughs> if you would like to see more Photoshop videos on my channel, please leave those, those uh, in the comments section below. Uh, that's definitely good information for me to know just so I know which, uh, uh, which direction to take future videos moving forward. As always, I really appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.